Hey folks, Rob here. And I said I wasn't going to make no more Hatfield uh, cleaning videos, but uh, I think we'll uh, make an exception on this one because this is a 410. And um, I haven't cleaned it yet, but I did uh, partially disassemble it. And uh, this gun's a little more difficult to uh, to work with than the others. Uh, this one's definitely a, a harder gun to take apart and put back together, so... Anyway, we're going to start by removing our magazine cap. And of course, this gun is unloaded because uh, I don't have any ammunition for it. Still haven't found any 410 as of yet. So anyway, we're going to remove our handguard. And this is uh, supposed to be Turkish walnut. Fairly nice stock. It has a little little sleeve that runs through there that allows you to tighten this down and doesn't really put any real force on the handguard so this is works a little bit different than the others this actually has a recoil spring on your magazine tube as opposed to what all the others have the uh, uh, recoil spring that's in the stock and it has a lever that runs back from the bolt so we're going to Pull back on our, our bolt handle here and lock that to the rear. Well, I said we were there. Okay, we're locked. That will allow us to remove our barrel. So we're going to pull our barrel out. Well, I said we were. Okay, so. First thing, if you pull the bolt all the way back, your your barrel lug's going to hit on this. So we're going to have to uh, let this come forward slowly. So we're going to have to let this come forward enough that we can clear the barrel. All right. Then we are going to pull out our operating or our charging handle here and this one proved to be a little bit more difficult to do than on the others you gotta get this lined up just right and the best way to do is get it to come all the way forward to where it's making some contact there push back ever so slightly and pull the charging handle out and then this will all just come out So there is your carrier, your recoil spring, and then of course you have your magazine too. And this one actually has two pins that hold the trigger group together. So here's your bolt. And of course it's 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 dirty. It's like every Hatfield gun I bought yet. It's got a old black nasty looking grease on it. Uh, here's your operating rod and your carrier, uh, your bolt carrier, and that simply goes on this front piece. Uh, it's got two ears on it that correspond with this, so it only goes on one way. So that's that. And then you have your actual gas piston inside your barrel extension or your gas uh, chamber there. So anyway, let's... Uh, uh, let's knock out this, uh, these two pins here and take our trigger group out. I don't think I'll need a, a hammer to do this. No, they just punch out. So there's your front pin. And your rear pin. And they just pull out. And then we will work our trigger group out and this gun does have a metal trigger group so uh, it's all metal which all the other Hatfields have plastic so uh, a little different design on that and uh, yeah so anyway we got this all disassembled now and uh, we're gonna clean it up here a little bit 
I think I will uh, pause this and uh, just do the cleaning of it. Uh, there's uh, nothing uh, nothing special about the cleaning of it. You know, just uh, spray it. I use some CLP uh, to clean it out with and then a little CLP to reassemble it. And uh, But anyway, I'm going to clean it and then we'll go over the reassembly of it. That way the video ain't so long. And I won't ramble so much. Okay, I've cleaned all the Turkish crude oil that they uh, put on these things. Uh, uh, pack them with. Taking all that off. And uh, so we're going to start. Uh, I found it's best to start with your receiver. And your bolt carrier. So we're going to put our, we're going to use a little CLP on this. So we're going to lube it up with some CLP. And we want to give it every opportunity to run. Uh, we're put a little CLP on this bolt. A little bit here in the, the grooves, the bearing surfaces. We want this thing to, I don't want it real wet, but... I want it with a uh, generous uh, smattering of uh, CLP. And we're going to put a little bit here on our carrier. We're just going to put a little bit here on the top bearing surface. And place our bolt on our carrier, making sure that's forward. Uh, let me get my rag over here. So the trick with this gun is that... Uh, you have to push this, the, uh, the, uh, oh, the magazine, the catch for the, the magazine to hold the shells in. The, so you have to kind of finagle that in. So put your recoil spring back over your tube, and then we'll start, we'll, uh, reinsert our, uh, and I do want to put a little CLP inside this because this does slide on your on your uh, pump handle there. So we're going to reinstall that on our bolt carrier group and start to work this back over our magazine tube. that over our magazine too and get this started back now when you get back to here okay now you have to reach up inside this this carrier let me see if I can show you better let me flip it over right up inside there see this this is your catch that catches the lip of your shells you have to reach up inside there, and that's why it's hard to do. If you put the uh, if you put the trigger group back in first, that's almost impossible. So you have to depress that enough to to allow that carrier to start back in there, and then once you get back in there, it will it will go. Now with that back in the gun, you can reinsert your charging handle. I know you can't see that now. See it dropped right in. You guys got to get it in the, in the right spot. And I was not getting it in the right spot. So, got my charging handle back in. We'll put a little CLP on these, on these rails. I want them to slide in and out real easy. Put me a few drops here on my magazine tube. Okay, so that's all lubed up now. Now we will reinsert our trigger group before we put our barrel back on. So I want to put a few drops of CLP around the trigger here, around these moving parts. This is a this little trigger group is is made uh, definitely heavier duty than the. Uh, the ones on the the bigger caliber guns. So we'll 
cocker hammer. So we put some CLP on our trigger group. Just kind of hold it up. Got it. Some oil on it. Now let's reinsert it into our gun. Kind of working it in. And it is kind of tight. And there it would. That's too far. Try to get our pin holes lined up so the back one appears to be in line. We'll set it in there. Tap it in. We'll put our front pin in. Tap it in. our two pins so now we can force our action and it locks back so this is your magazine lock or your bolt lock uh, also is your release so if you push this forward it's going to release your bolt although this one is a little sticky we'll have to see how that comes into play uh, when we start shooting the gun Put a little bit of CLP on them rails Want to get this real good Because we don't want anything having any sticking issues and it, this gun will probably take a few rounds to, to break in So anyway now that we've got that done I'm not going to use any kind of lubricant on our piston itself on the inner part I am going to put a little bit on this inner part which actually is what slides on the uh, the magazine tube so we will reinstall this over our magazine tube and get it started here over the bolt and we will pull back on the bolt as we and then we can release it and it will lock the barrel in so now we have our our gas piston reinstalled our operating rods reinstalled uh, we'll put a little CLP on this before I put the forearm on a little bit here just for the bearing surface Under the handguard, I don't care to leave it a little, a little more CLP. That just helps kind of prevent any moisture or anything from getting under the handguard and causing rust issues. So with that, we will reinstall our handguard. Let's just slide it over the whole assembly. our barrel back because our barrel did come out so let's get that to the rear get our hand guard in and reinstall our end cap now this gun is definitely more challenging to work with just because it's slightly a little bit different design than the other Hatfields uh, with the uh, the others are kind of a hybrid system where this one is more of a just a strictly a gas gun uh, so it is a little more and it's just smaller everything's smaller uh, biggest thing you got to watch out for is you have to get that uh, shell catch shell stop uh, on your magazine pushed back in so that you can get your uh, bolt carrier to uh, to go in other than that it's not there's nothing uh, extremely more difficult about it but anyway guys uh, just a quick uh, video 
Uh, I thought I'd do one specifically on the 20 or the 410 because it is a little bit of a different beast. Uh, I have some ammo coming for this. I got a box of ammo coming, so maybe uh, they're giving some bad weather here tomorrow. But if it don't rain and it's nice, we may try to uh, to uh, give this a shot or two. Uh, we've got her cleaned and lubed and ready to go now. So anyway, guys, there is the Hatfield SAS in 410. Uh, $236 Walmart semi-automatic 410 shotgun. Well, uh, so far, I, knock on wood, uh, of all the other three Hatfields I have purchased, uh, I have had pretty good luck. They're all running uh, fairly good. The uh, 12 gauge had a few hiccups. Uh, the 20 ran really fairly well considering I was only using uh, low brass ammo in it from the get-go. The 28 gauge was actually the best performing straight out of the box. I think I had one little hiccup out of 25. Uh, so, uh, so far, I'm having pretty good luck. Now my buddy Boomstick, over at Boomstick779, I know y'all watch his channel because most of the people that watch mine come from his. So I know you watch both of us. But it would appear that the Hatfields he's getting, he's not having quite as good luck as what I'm having. So that being said, you know, these these things might just be uh, luck of the draw. You might go get a good one, and then you might get a crappy one. Uh, knock on wood, so far, mine have been pretty good. Uh, you know, I, I get on here and I, 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 I buy these things and I present them, present them to you guys and I, I show them um, to the best of my ability. And, uh, you know, I know some of you have went out and bought these guns and, and I just hope and pray that uh, you get good guns. Uh, I would hate to think that I would uh, sway somebody to buy something that wasn't, wasn't uh, uh something decent for the price um have they been perfect no uh, they haven't they've all had their little you know little hiccups here and there uh, the 12 gauge being the probably the most problematic but it it after 25 rounds it started running fine actually last time i shot it i put uh 11 45 feet per second uh, loads through it and it worked them all fine so uh, the 20 gauge was running fine. The 28 gauge was running, in my opinion, exceptionally fine. So maybe this one will be my unlucky one. So we'll see. Uh, the shells I'm getting for it are two and a half inches, which I don't know if it'll run two and a halves or not, especially the fact that it's brand new. Uh, you know, finding three inch uh, 410 ammunition right now is near to impossible. Um, I do have one box of... Uh, Two and a half inch Winchester uh, double A's. Uh, I'll be getting there tomorrow or later today. So, um, anyway, uh, just uh, thought uh, I'd bring you along and we'd do the cleaning on this one since it is a little more involved, a little more difficult, uh, a little bit different. Nothing major, but anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this helps somebody. Uh, I hope if you do find one of these and you buy it, it's, it's like an outstanding gun. Uh, so far, my three that I have experience with, not taking into account this one, which I have not shot, um, you know, for the money, I, I consider them to be fairly hard to beat. I mean, uh, you know, for a field gun, something to go out and rabbit hunt or squirrel hunt or you know, or throwing a boat or a duck blind or, you know, they're not, they're not so expensive that if you scratch it or, you know, you put a gouge in it or you scratch the receiver or the barrel, you know, they're not highly finished anyway. So, you know, this is the kind of gun you can go out and use and not feel guilty about. I have owned really nice guns in the past, some really nice shotguns. And 
those are the type you hate to like oh i don't really want to take that out and go hunting and maybe scratch it up and you know hurt the value of it you know these things are basically worthless away from bombs <laughs> uh anyway guys thanks for watching i appreciate it and uh until the next uh, video uh, we'll see you later hopefully we'll be doing some shooting in the next videos if the weather holds out i appreciate everybody and uh, we'll see you later.